This is From Both Sides, a spontaneous, free-flowing conversation featuring a dynamic team of women, providing insights into both political and civic events affecting the lives of women throughout Pennsylvania. And now, here's your host. Hello, and welcome to another edition of From Both Sides. I'm Michelle Saletto, your host, and today we explore the gender gap in the Pennsylvania congressional delegation. In the United States, there are 435 congressional districts, 18 of which are in Pennsylvania. Each district represents about 710,000 residents. Uh, each district elects a representative for a two-year term. Representatives are typically called congressmen or congresswomen, except in Pennsylvania. Currently, believe it or not, there are no women representing Pennsylvania residents in Congress. Why is that, and what can we do about it? Today joining me to lead the discussion on this very important issue to Pennsylvania citizens is my friend and colleague, uh, Maura Donnelly. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Maura. Good Hi. to have you. Thanks for having me. Okay. That's great. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, I think it's a show that's really important for all of our citizens, and uh, we have two great guests today. Yes, we do. Uh, so let me introduce them. Without further ado, uh, we have Dr. Debbie Williams. Debbie is a... Um, uh, an insurance agent, a financial strategist, a actress, a model. In fact, uh, both of our uh, guests have resumes so long I can't, we'd we run can, out of time in would. the show to go over them. <laughs> Impressive. But uh, she also has a doctor of theology. She is running in the first congressional district, which is the greater Philadelphia area, and she is a Republican candidate for Congress. Debbie, welcome to the show. Thank you. And I'd like to also introduce Dr. Mary Ellen Belchunas. She's a professor of political science at LaSalle University, Democratic candidate in the 7th Congressional District, parts of actually five counties, Delaware, Chester, Montgomery, Berks, and Lancaster. So Mary Ellen, it's great to have you here today. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Um, I'd like to start off by, first of all, thanking you both for running, because obviously if we as women don't run, we're never going to win. So thank you both for trying to solve this gender gap problem. Um, we're really happy to have you here today and hear your perspectives on, on running as women. And I just want to start by asking you both um, to give me your elevator speech. I know as you're meeting people, you're shaking a lot of hands right now, and I want to hear what you say about yourselves that would make people want to vote for you. So do you want to start, Debbie, and tell us what's your elevator pitch? Well, I introduce myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Debbie Williams. I'm running for Congress in Pennsylvania's first congressional district. And when people ask me, you know, well, what are the issues in the district, I, I am quick to mention the fact that in the first congressional district, we have the highest level of poverty among large cities in the entire nation. Wow. And a lot of people don't realize, they see what's happening on the ground, but they don't realize how bad it is. And my opponent has been in office for 19 years has passed 12 bills, only three of them have anything to do with Pennsylvania, and those three are post office name changes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we open the conversation. Oh, intriguing. <laughs> how would you, how, what would you say when you're, for, you know, what do you say when you're first meeting people? I'm Mary Ellen Balchunas. I'm the Democratic candidate for the seventh congressional district. And America Votes says that Pennsylvania is the worst gerrymandered district in the nation. And Pennsylvania 7 is the worst of the worst. It includes five counties. Used to be, this is Joe Sustek's old seat, mm -hmm. used to be uh, predominantly Delaware County. Now it's Delaware County, Chester County, Montgomery, Lancaster, and Berks. Thank Political goodness. science professor mm -hmm. at LaSalle University. Um, I have a master's in public administration, a PhD in political science from Temple. Uh, and uh, I'm in this race for a number of reasons. Um, I want to protect Medicare and Social Security, um, expand Social Security. I want to work to stop the gun violence. Um, my opponent is Pat Mahon, and uh, he was asked right after Orlando about if he changed his stance on assault, banning assault weapons, and he said no. Uh, so I'm one of those million mile marchers, so it's one of the things that I really want to work on. And as a college professor, I really want to work on uh, the interest rates on student loans, decreasing them, and making college more affordable. Mm -hmm. I'm from the district, I raised my daughter in the district, and I will work hard to serve the people of the 7th. Great. 
Well, considering, you know, all the challenges that, you know, confront women who run for political office, it's obvious because we have no women Congress, Congress uh, women uh, here in Pennsylvania. What made each of you decide to run for Congress? Debbie? Well, I ran in 2004 against Congressman Brady, and I don't see that it's gotten any better. As a matter of fact, I see that it's gotten worse. Uh, Pennsylvania, unfortunately, has a bad reputation for corruption. And I think we need some new people in office to help change that and change the narrative for Pennsylvania. Um, I support women, not just because I am one, but because we make up more than 50% of the population in Pennsylvania, in the United States. And I think after all of these years, it's ridiculous, like for me, if I win, I would be the first African American and first minority woman to serve in Congress from Pennsylvania, and that's huge. But it shouldn't. It shouldn't be that. This is 2016, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I see other nations that are not as progressive as America, who have many more women representing the people in their their countries. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely underrepresented. Absolutely. Not just in Pennsylvania, yeah. but across the board. Mary Ellen, how about you? Why did you decide to run for Congress? I was actually asked by the party to run um, in 2014 um, with the idea that 2016 was the real election because more Democrats come out in presidential election with Hillary on the ballot. Um, more women are expected to come out to the polls. And uh, of course, Donald Trump is giving us a boost in the Philadelphia suburbs. Uh, so. Um, but I, was, I am passionate about politics uh, as a political science professor. I tell my students you can do a lot of good with politics, mm -hmm. and I felt like I shouldn't just talk the talk, mm -hmm. I should walk the walk. And for those issues that I talked about, I mean, I saw my mom um, die with dignity um, in, in 2014 because she had Medicare and she had Social Security, so I want to protect that for her. Um, uh, you know, I, I told you I was a million mile marcher, but one of our LaSalle students, um, our alum, lost his daughter in Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just as a college professor, I see students, they say the average student today graduates with $30,000 uh, in debt. Some of our LaSalle students have 100000 You know, they're in coming from a poor neighborhood or a poor community. Um, and, and, of course, I want to see our government represented. And you started by saying that there are zero women out of 20 in the federal delegation. Um, so, you know, we're 51 percent of the population. We should be 51 percent of the population. We deserve at least one woman. We should have several women mm -hmm. in the delegation. So those are some of the key reasons I'm running. And Debbie, you, you ran before, didn't you, in 2004? Yes. Actually, in 2003, I was chosen by the party to run for 8th District City Council. And then in 2004, they asked me, because I guess they didn't have anyone else, <laughs> if I'd run for Congress. And I grew up in a housing project in North Philadelphia. So it's not an opportunity that someone from that background gets. And I've had many opportunities. I won a full scholarship to Harvard, even though I didn't go. But, you know. That still counts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm taking some courses online with Harvard and as in public health. And I, uh, I feel s like it, it's kind of a calling for me. Aside from my doctorate in, in, in theology, not everyone's going to preach on the pulpit. And some, for me, when people ask, I say my pulpit is the world. Oh. So that's why I'm out here doing that. And, and even listening to you, even though you're a, a Democrat and I'm a Republican, we share some of the same values and positions on, on, on the issues, especially a challenge in Pennsylvania is the weapons, right. weapons violence. And I have not always gotten the endorsement of everyone because of my position, but when I, I grew up in North Philadelphia, I can't um, not support some controls. I don't think we should take everyone's guns away, but who needs an AK-47? Really, right. you know? So, but I do support um, 
universal background checks. You know, there are, there are things we can do that have been proven to lessen the number of incidences of weapon, weapons violence. So I, th I think um, it's time for us to speak up and get out there and, and make a change. Well, you know, um, right now, even after 100 years and uh, since the first woman was elected to Congress, I think in 1917, Congress is only 19% female. Um, I think the Democrats actually fare better, Mary Ellen, than the Republicans. We about 30 percent of uh, women in Congress are Democrats, and about um, eight or nine percent are Republican. But if if both of you are elected, or either of you are elected to Congress, how do you think that will influence the effectiveness in uh, in Congress? And will the issues still be the same if there are more women at the table? Mm -hmm. um, I think it will definitely uh, affect. The effectiveness, <laughs> increase the effectiveness of Congress. There you uh, go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, studies show that uh, women are more likely to compromise and negotiate. And I point to the shutdown of the government. Um, my opponent, Pat Meehan, was one of those people that voted to shut down the government. But it was the women in Congress, the Democratic women, mm -hmm. the Republican women, the women in the House and the women in the Senate got together. Apparently they have breakfast and they talk about their children. Some of them talk about their grandchildren. I said, I have plenty to brag about my daughter. <laughs> I'll be at that breakfast. And uh, those breakfasts, they, they got to know each other and they uh, worked together. And they were the ones that came up with the compromise to mm -hmm. bring government back. And I said, that's where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and also, I mean, studies show that when you have women in the legislature, federal or state, you get more legislation that helps women, children, and families. So you think the issues in the discussion will change? Yes. W women tend to also focus more on uh, domestic issues, like we care about our children's health, mm -hmm. uh, their education, and men tend to, you know, focus on like the economy and the war issues. So I think you'll see more focus on uh, those those the domestic front. exactly yeah. okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the home front is important, but also those issues of, I was in the Army ROTC at one point, oh, and good. then I was married to someone who was in the Navy. So it's not just those, just the local issues. Of course, I'm, I'm focusing on those local issues, but I've been vocal about uh, terrorism because that's something we really have to look at. and. Um, when we see what's going on in Europe right now, people need to know that we do take this seriously and that even as women, you know, that doesn't change the way we feel about protecting our nation. And one thing you said was mm -hmm. that the women got together mm -hmm. and stopped that foolishness <laughs> because that is what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I was. I was yelling at the television, like, "Don't pay them if they won't, if they won't compromise, if they won't talk, if they won't do anything. Don't pay them." What job can you do right. where you can go to work and not and do not your job and not <laughs> right and job. still get paid and, and still get paid <laughs> still get paid and still keep your job right? So, this is why I think we do need some changes so that we can get things moving again. And that's one thing women do. We get it done. Right. Well, you've both mentioned that, you, that you're running against incumbents, which just by the nature of it makes it for a far more challenging um, race. So what are, what are you doing differently or you know, what, are you, what, what do you hope to do differently to have a successful campaign against an incumbent? We're working on that, and of course, the incumbents have you know pretty much all of the advantages. And just running, you can see that um, they have more advantages than, than the textbook even talks about. I mean, they get the whole month of October to off to campaign, and um, just a number uh, of issues. But you're right; um, they enjoy the name recognition. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with social media. Um, we're really uh, trying to, I mean, we had a big win in the primary. We were not expected to win. We had a challenger who was heavily funded, and um, he did mailings, direct, he did six uh, direct mail pieces. He was on KYW News Radio, and we ended up winning that primary um, 74 to 26 percent. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's so a big win for you, Mary Ellen. Yeah, That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and at this point, we're going to hold those thoughts. We're going to okay. take a break, and we're going to hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Thank you.
From Both Sides is a production of the Susquehanna Valley Center for Public Policy and is made possible by the support of the Pennsylvania Center for Women and Politics at Chatham University, a nonpartisan center devoted to fostering women's public leadership through education, empowerment, and action. The first to focus on women's political involvement in Pennsylvania, the center integrates disciplinary knowledge, civic education, and capacity building while examining the intersection of women and public policy. From Both Sides is also supported as a public service by Saul Ewing LLP, a law firm with a 100-year tradition of serving the needs of business, government, education, healthcare, technology, and manufacturing in our region and by the University Center for International Studies, the engine for extending the global reach of the University of Pittsburgh and its students. From Both Sides is also sponsored by Dr. Wendell Funk, one of Central Pennsylvania's most experienced cosmetic plastic surgeons. Dr. Funk is a leader in new and innovative non-invasive procedures like cool sculpting. His long-term experience with all types of cosmetic surgery, as well as facial injectables, keeps new and repeat patients returning to his practice in Lancaster, York, and Camp Hill. From Both Sides is also sponsored by the Ed and Jeannie Arnold Foundation. Welcome back to From Both Sides. We're talking to Dr. Mary Ellen Belchunas and Dr. Debbie Williams about running as candidates for Congress as women in Pennsylvania. So Debbie, to get back to our earlier conversation, we were talking about how difficult it is to run against an incumbent. How is it going for you uh, in terms of running against your opponent? It's going rather well, and it's much better than the last time I ran. In the primary, I got almost five times as many votes as I got before, which was great. Uh, and then when I talk to people, people are ready for a change. I'm receiving more support, uh, both with people wanting to help and then financially. And that's one of the major challenges for, for us as women or anyone who's running against an incumbent is getting the money because people are like, oh, you're running against him. Huh? And I'm running against Congressman Brady who is chair of the Democratic Party in Philadelphia. So people are like, you're running against, uh, it's like David running against Goliath. Right. And I, I mentioned to them, well, you know, every time I read my Bible, David wins. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good point to make. Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the issues in Pennsylvania is that we don't have a pipeline of women running at various levels, local, mm -hmm. uh, county offices, as m as much as we need to, so that when we do have a position open in Congress or a slot to run for, we don't have that pipeline to pull from. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you have any thoughts and ideas on how we get more women interested in running for public office? We do things like this. We talk about it. They need to know that not only are we interested in running, but that our hearts are pure in our motives. And I get that sense from you. And I know this is, I, I could do something else if I wanted, but this is what I want to do. Not only that, um, they need to know that they're needed. You know, women like to fix things. You know, we, we, we try to fix things, but when it comes to this, we take a back seat, and there's no reason for that. When we make up more than 50% of the population here, 50% of the population in the United States, over 50% is women, like 51%. Um, but then, in overall government in the United States, uh, women only represent about 18%. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the same in Pennsylvania, the General Assembly is right. well, about that same percentage. Right. Mm -hmm. And like you said, 19% in Congress. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. But um, I think w if we encourage more women, because encouragement creates empowerment, mm -hmm. then they will, they'll come out of the shadows. We're hoping. Mary Ellen? Yeah. Uh, there are some really great programs that are encouraging and recruiting women to run for office. I was actually just uh, invited to participate with Emerge Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I highly recommend them. Um, the training was excellent, mm -hmm. and the network that you build and the support that you get mm -hmm. um, was just so invaluable. I mean, to, to be able to call your Emerge sisters and uh, talk about 
difficult situations. It's it's wonderful to have that group of, of team. Uh, the other two programs in Pennsylvania are also Represent. Represent. And then, of course, one of our sponsors, the uh, Center for Women in Politics out of Chatham University in Pittsburgh. Yes. Another excellent program mm -hmm. for women. I've been to that. That is excellent. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great training. Um, I just wish we could get more women starting to run at local levels because, I don't know, have either of you had uh, an elected office before? Any elected offices in terms of local or county? I was appointed a ward leader mm -hmm. and then as I mentioned I ran for City Council and for Congress before mm -hmm. um, but I've worked on other people's campaigns and volunteered in people's offices and volunteered at the prothonotary's office so I've been doing this even as a, a child mm -hmm. I was politically active mm -hmm. and uh, but people don't expect us to run you know they expect us to be support for the guys mm -hmm. and it's time for us to come out of the shadows as i said and stop being cheer cheerleaders yes. and and get on the field yeah mm -hmm. oh i like that yeah i do too <laughs> I, i've been involved in the party for really probably since i was a child as well mm -hmm. i'm active in college um, i was uh, vice chair of the Upper Darby Democrats, vice chair of the Delaware County Democrats, and elected to uh, Pennsylvania State uh, Committee and re-elected to State Committee okay. as well. And I actually have experience working uh, in government. I was an assistant to the mayor in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay, so, so if a young woman came to either one of you today and said, I'm thinking about running, what would be the first piece of advice that you would give them? I, as a political science professor, I would recommend that they get involved with the party, the party of their choice, mm -hmm. um, because the party has been, you know, really helpful to me. Uh, I learned about the issues out in the community, um, how to deal with those, and how to get responses. So, uh, I would definitely say, and there are community people openings. Mm -hmm. um, I know throughout the city, throughout our districts. Uh, so go to the party chairs, go to the ward leaders, tell them you want to do this. Say, you can, can be appointed. You were appointed mm -hmm. at first, yeah. I would tell them to study the issues, know the issues, and not from a bias standpoint, not from either side, so that you get a balanced view of what Americans are thinking about, because it's not just a Republican or Independent or Democrat. We're the United States of America. And if you want to represent people, then you need to understand what their needs are, what the needs of the community is, know the statistics, and get out there and do the best job mm -hmm. you can do running for office so that they know that you're really serious about being in office. But being active in the community, whether it's the League of Women Voters or a nonprofit, can also help women. And mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see a lot of women come from that and that mm -hmm. sector of the mm -hmm. population. How hard has it been for you to raise money? That's probably the biggest challenge um, I have. I mean, we don't have the Rolodex that the men have with the lawyers. I'm, I'm a political science professor at LaSalle University. We're in a poor neighborhood where our mission is to serve the community. Um, so. I don't have those high donors in my roller decks and you know I, I think about pay equity if we were given fair pay what you know what the men got we'd have extra income that we could support other candidates uh, uh, female candidates um, so that's been a challenge well for me um, it was challenging before now people are starting to open up and you know I spoke with um, Senator Toomey a couple of days ago and uh, maybe five seconds into the conversation, he said, I want to give you a check. I'm like, thank you. Oh, <laughs> so, well, you know. We were always that easy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but now people, are, people want to meet. They want to have breakfast or lunch. And, and they're like, we want, to, we want to give you money. And I'm like, OK, because that is what I need. Um, and I'm going to put up as much of a fight as I can because I think the people are worth it. Right, and I think the more they get to know us, the more they feel comfortable, and the more the money comes in. The endorsements are really rolling in for us now. We mm -hmm. just got National Planned Parenthood, National Democracy for America, the Congressional Progressive Caucus. So those so typically come with a little bit of money, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so that all adds endorsements, up. Exactly. Yes, that's, good point. That's good news, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about gender equity in politics, uh, it's often been said that um, the first woman who wins, it's really not about her. 
-hmm. It's really about all of the women who come after her mm -hmm. or the little girls that kind of wonder if we're ever going to see themselves as a, a leader in their community or in their country. Um, how do you think that your election might affect young girls in your community? You, okay. Mm -hmm. I know that, I mean, I look at my, even my evaluations at school, the young women will say it was great to have a female professor, political science professor is the only female in the department. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see it with our volunteers, they'll tell me that I'm inspiring them. Um, the little girl up the street was asking me about Congress and she asked me if I had to go to Congress school. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that was so great. Like yeah. you, you have these young girls now thinking that they can enter politics and they can and they can win mm -hmm. and they can do great things. When I, I talk to people, especially coming from my background, um, a lot of people are excited and um, I think what you, what you were saying about the first woman not being as important, it is. It is important because I think that first woman sets the standard or she's, she's like the blueprint mm -hmm. for what to do and what not to do. And uh, I think it's very important that we, especially looking at the way the, the political climate is right now that we come in and we make it attractive for people to still want to be a part of the process because honestly a lot of women don't get in I think because it's nasty you know politics can be very nasty and we don't want that messiness well I think we've seen that through the political campaign this year how oh. the degree <laughs> this of is do a whole show on yes. one yeah. particular candidate yes. <laughs> you'll have yes. to come back yes yes <laughs> My full fright is in mass media and politics, so I hope you'll invite me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'd be an interesting discussion, I'm sure. Definitely. <laughs> well, um, you know, as we conclude the program today, um, I just want to wish you both well. You. Um, I think you're both excellent candidates. You're certainly eminently qualified, both of you. Um, of course, I tend to lean a little more left than I do right, but okay. Debbie, what I like about that's you why is... That's I'm here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Debbie's I mean, such I'm, a, I'm, a moderate, I yeah, think, yeah, and, and yeah. reasonable, I mean, and I think what that's I kind of what, what's missing, quite yeah. frankly, a, a moderate, reasonable mm -hmm. discussion of the issues that really affect all Pennsylvanians. Yeah. So just as we close, um, any final words, uh, Debbie and Mary Ellen, about how we can get more women involved in running for political office really quickly? Just do it. Oh, love it. I did like that, uh, get off the cheerleading and Stop cheerleading and get, get on the field. Get on the field. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, this election, especially with the uh, issue of background checks and assault weapons, this is the issue where women, moms, can make a real difference. So um, we are very much needed uh, to run in this election. So we need to run, but we also need support. Yes. And you need to win. And we, and we need, need to, to win. win. <laughs> okay. And we will. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. It was a great show. We need to have you back because there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the viewers, and I'd like to remind you that as women in Pennsylvania, there's much more that unites us than divides us. Thank you, and join us again.